God, as a Muslim follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the guidance of Brother Louis Farrakhan and please uh, correct me if I am in error but I was taught that in the nation of Islam Elijah Muhammad did not wish that we celebrate birthdays because why should we celebrate your birthday when you've done nothing to prove worthy of being or the celebration of your birth besides just being born? So for many years, I did not even keep up with my birthday. I forgot <laughs> how old I was because we did not celebrate birthdays. <clears throat> now, some of you and some of us, we might feel as though just being born is enough to celebrate your birth anniversary because as you know you can't actually celebrate your birthday your birthday has come and gone but you can celebrate the anniversary of your birth but for some reason I don't know we always say give me a birthday party instead of a birth anniversary party or whatever. However you want to view that. But I just want to elaborate on what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, said to us about this celebration of your birth when you have not proved any type of worthiness has the house of consciousness has it proved itself worthy of us coming together and celebrating its anniversary I would say yes especially after 13 years that's a long time to be on the battlefield, on the forefront. I heard, I believe it was Brother Sarnetta on a video, he was talking about they were street vendors. And they took this message of consciousness and began to promote it to the people, not by marching, but hands-on experience. The same type of example that the mighty FOI of the Nation of, example, uh, of Islam gave an example of on the street with the people. This is where you find Brother Sanada and Brother Natcha Tahuri and many of our brothers and sisters. You find them on the forefront in the holes in the holes Right there with the people. Not hiding always behind a computer. A computer is a good tool. But there's nothing like hands on. And the house of consciousness deserves celebration because it is and has been a hands on method to open the minds of the people. Of our people who have been made Deaf, dumb, and blind. But conscious, the house of consciousness, what are you conscious of? You are conscious that you know that you are not European. 
That's what you're conscious of. You know that something, you're conscious that something is wrong. Something has happened to us as a people. And all of us who know that something has happened to us as a people, even as an individual, then we come into this house. Thus, the house of consciousness. But just because you are conscious does not mean you're going to do anything. There are many people. <laughs> I mean, so I was just thinking about this and it made me laugh. I'm going to tell you what I'm, what I'm thinking. There are many of us <laughs> who are conscious that we have poor hygiene. We are conscious that our teeth are not brushed. We're conscious that we haven't taken a bath in four or five days. Your hair not cut. We are conscious of those things. But because you are conscious does not mean you're going to do anything about it. So your breath stink worse. And your kinky hair tighten up even tighter. And your teeth begin to rot. Because you are conscious of your situation, but you're not going to do anything about it. So if this was the attitude of the house of consciousness, then it would not be worthy of celebration. Because the only thing the house of consciousness would be an example of or represent just the awakening, awakening of the mind, but there is no activity behind that awakening. So we celebrate the 13th anniversary of the House of Consciousness because it began as an activity. And it continues to grow in activity in, in, in hopes and in a manner that we see uh, the different methods in order to awaken the minds of those who are mentally dead, their brains have become zombified. Is that a, a word? <laughs> zombified? <laughs> I would like to say this to all of us and all of those who participate in, in the celebration of this 13th anniversary of the House of Consciousness. I want to remind us, because you probably already know, we have to work harder. Many of us, we work hard. The job of awakening a dead people is it's difficult. I understand. We all understand. All of us who've been in the struggle, you know how hard it is to work with the so-called Negro. But before we can actually work with the so-called Negro, we have to work on ourselves. The success we will have with the so-called Negro, those who were made deaf, dumb, and blind, is determined by what we do in our own personal lives, what we do in our own personal, with our own personal self. A house divided. This is a house of consciousness. A house divided cannot stand. This was great wisdom, I believe, came from the President of the United States. Abraham Lincoln. He was correct. This was prior to the Civil War or, or somewhere in that, that time period. Why isn't the house one house? I want to ask you that. Everybody coming to celebrate. I'm going to invite Sarah Sutton said it. We're going to invite Brother Polite. We're going to invite Nacho Tuhuri. We're going to invite all these people to come celebrate the house 
of consciousness. But there are too many houses. We are coming together as one to celebrate the 13th anniversary. You tired of me saying that? <laughs> we're, we're coming together as one to celebrate the house of consciousness. But everybody is living in separate houses. But did not Abraham Lincoln say, a house divided cannot stand. There should be one house. You can be an individual. You can be yourself. But that's what a family is. That's what a family is. A family is one unit. A family is one house. Black Power family is one house. But it is, it is composed of different individuals. One house. When you come up against that one house, you come up against a family. You come up against these different individuals. They are under one house. We cannot be one house. Now, come on now. I know some of you, you're going to get angry with me and upset or whatever. Some of y'all say, well, that's needed. And yes, to certain points, such is needed. But also, we have something called oversaturation. You're overdoing these things. You cannot be family. You cannot be considered one house when we are debating one another. This is almost the same thing as the murder that's going on in our communities in Houston and Chicago, L.A. It's almost the same thing. We are attacking one another. I, I got to prove this Negro wrong. I got to prove that Negro wrong. Why is there an obsession with debating and challenging one another when you should be debating and challenging those who put us in the condition that we're in? Unless, of course, you a nigger or a negro that's only exploiting our situation, trying to sell DVDs, trying to make money off our people. And that's another category I just told you about that. We have to watch ourselves. Everybody that's black. Everybody that's talk about black power ain't your friend. Everybody that's black is not your brother. In fact, i tell you this. Some of these dark Europeans or Sambos or Uncle Tom, some of them are more your brother and sister than these so-called black power family folks. Black conscious. They are more your enemy than even them. Because they are here to exploit us. And become a black vampire. Black devil. But if you are in a house of consciousness. Then you know this already. And we should show this by our activity. You should not see. These constant debates. And uh, going on between one another because I'm not going to argue all day with my family I'm not going to argue all day with my brother when I got devils when I got devils to slay I got beasts to bang on and I need your help brother you got to have my back so when it come down on me or something happened to me then I know you'll take my place in this struggle we have to step up to the plate and protect this house of consciousness. If we want to debate, if we want to argue among one another, then we should argue and debate over who has the best school, who has created the most jobs for our people in need of employment, who's producing the greatest soldiers, the greatest warriors, the greatest men. The most, the most 
respect for women, sisters, the most intelligent children, the most well-behaved babies, who has decreased the crime in our communities. If you want to debate, let's debate on our activity in solving the sickness or bringing cure to the sicknesses that affect our house of consciousness. Which, of course, is all our people. We are under the umbrella of, a, of this house of consciousness. You talk about Africa. Who has created that umbilical cord to any African nation? A nation that can give us our land when we're ready. For those who are brave enough to start a new nation. Willing to sacrifice and die for future generations in a new place. A connection to Africa, a connection to somewhere in China. Anybody that will give you, give you, give me, give us what we want. We want our own nation when it's all said and done. We want our own laws. We want our own government. We want our own justice system. We want our own educational system. Our own media. We want everything belong to us. And in our success, I guarantee you, if you do it right, even so-called Americans, everybody around the world would like to come or they will change what they do to copy and mimic what we do if you are a successful, what they call righteous person. But if the only thing you're going to do is build a nation and act just like your oppressors, it's going to fail. And this house of consciousness will also fall. It's not even going to get to that point. This house of consciousness will fall. It'll never get to that point. What's the sense of being oppressed under the white man just to graduate to a black oppressor and many people in Africa are suffering under black oppression. You know this. And if you go over there, you'll find out the hard way. Because they are also, those Africans are also a conquered people and many of them think like white folks. Success is material things to them. They oppress and exploit their people just like how Caucasian people exploited their whole nation at one time. Many of these African nations just recently, within the, within the late 1950s, early 1960s, just recently regained their uh, freedom from under uh, European colonial, colonialism. Did I say that right? <laughs> Sometimes I just get tongue-tied on words. The house of consciousness should be a representative of brotherhood, true brotherhood, true sisterhood, whereas we seek allies from Africa, we seek allies from China, anybody that will help us doing what we need to do. The House of Consciousness should represent a united front of black people who are under one umbrella. They are a family, but we are a family of individuals, but we're working for the same common purpose and goal. And the ultimate goal is a nation for our people that we can call our own. We deserve our own house because we are conscious. But it is difficult because we don't work on our personal self. Many of us still suffer from self-hatred. We suffer from being envious of another brother. Oh, because he thinks he's so smart. He's prettier than I am. We are jealous of one another. Although we are conscious, 
we still suffer from envy and jealousy and all these. Some of us are materialistic. We still suffer from some of the ills that come from up out of the devil's society. The society of the oppressor. Brother and sister. We can't go back to the past. We cannot continue to live. And brag about somebody else's accomplishment. Now. I will admit to you. I don't know about. I don't know much about, a lot about ancient Egypt or Kemet or uh, the black Moor science and the, 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 the Moors and the, the Hebrew Israel. I'm not, I'm not going to become here and tell you I know a lot about this, these things. But what I do know is that you cannot live and brag about what your daddy did. The Egyptians did what they did. The Israelites did what they did. That's their history. This is your history. Your history began upon the shores of North America over 400 years ago. That's our history. And we should be proud. You should be proud instead of bragging about Kemet, bragging about all these other things. Be proud of what we've done in America as a people. And we've done some great things. Even though we suffered. And there are so many obstacles. But we act like it's nothing. It means a lot. And our babies, our children need to know. About America. How are you going to teach about Kemet? How are you going to teach about what the ancient Israelites suffered or the Moors? If you cannot teach what happened to us in America, in Michigan, in Illinois, in Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, New York. Tell and teach our babies about how bad, how tough we are. We need to create our own. You don't need, it's, it's wonderful to know about Kemet and it's wonderful to know about all these different things, but that's somebody else's. It's more wonderful. Quick example. Isn't it more wonderful? And I'm going to leave us on this note. Isn't it more wonderful that you can fix the car yourself rather talk of, than talk about what your daddy can do? Oh man, my daddy, my father, he can fix all kinds of cars. And you talk about what your daddy do. But your daddy, what your daddy done, and because you are the son of, of, of your daddy or your father, I mean, that gives you a little bit credential. But what makes you stand out and what makes people respect you is that you are also able to create and build a Kemet. You can do what your ancestors done and greater. Yeah, my father can fix cars, but don't you know I can fix cars better than my dad. You That's self-esteem. To talk about what somebody else did only it's, it's for those who suffer from low self-esteem. And black folks do suffer from low self-esteem. But, but what gives us high self-esteem is when we accomplish things on our own. It's nice to have daddy's help or daddy's example. Mama's help, mama's example. But there's nothing no better than when you drive the car, fix the car yourself. And if you're not conscious of that, then apparently you must not be, you must be in the wrong house. Because I would think that that is also what the house of consciousness represents. Independence. 
doing your own thing. Not only as individuals coming to celebrate the anniversary of the House of Consciousness, but coming together as a family. So when you say black power, you're not saying just words. You have power because you are backed up not only for those of us who believe in God, not only are you backed up by God, but you backed up by that brother, that sister, that little black child. You back you are backed up by the whole unit under one house. So that is the goal and that should be the purpose of the house of consciousness and everything that I brought to us. If that is what the house of consciousness is about, then it is worthy of celebration. And it is a wonderful tool that is used for those of us who have suffered for over 400 years and now it is time for us to rise and be better and do better. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much for your attention, your time, and and many more happy anniversaries for Brother Sarnetta and this House of Consciousness. Peace forever and always. Respect you. Until next time, Black America. Ha, ha, ha.